moon back in NASA's course 50 years after first lunar landing, Cape Canaveral, Florida 50 years after humanity's took lunar cliff text, the moon is back in NASA's course. The White House wants U.S. astronauts on the moon pronto by 2024, a scant five years from now. The moon will serve as a critical proving ground, so thinking goes, for the real prize of sending astronauts to Mars in the 2032nd. But the Lunar Space Club is on board. Amazon Jeff Bezos and Virgin Galactic Richard Branson favor moon before Mars. Basic to Elon Musk also is rooting for the moon, although his heart is on colonizing Mars. But Apollo 11 astronaut Michael Collins prefers a beeline to Mars. But Aldrin, too, is a longtime Mars backer. Back in 1994 on the 25th anniversary of his moon landing with Neil Armstrong, Aldrin questioned whether astronauts would be back on the moon by the 50th anniversary let alone on Mars, which was the short list still at that time. Fast forward to the golden anniversary and NASA doesn't even have the capability to get astronauts into orbit around Earth. Russians are launching American astronauts to the International Space Station for high prices and will pass fulfilled by space and going are ready. That likely won't happen until next year, almost a decade after NASA's space shuttle program ended. Fifty years ago we landed, explored, got back up again, rounded out, came back. That's 50 years of non-progress, Aldrin grounds earlier this month during his anniversary back near Los Angeles. I think we all ought to be a little ashamed that we can do better than that. Collins, who circled the moon in the mothership while Aldrin and Armstrong planted a U.S. flag and gathered rocks, acknowledges that returning to the moon as a stepping stone to Mars is a valid plan. But I don't have to agree with it, Collins told the Associated Press. I would take what I call the John F. Kennedy approach and I will say if you want to go to Mars, you say you want to go to Mars and you go. Even President Donald Trump whose vice president is out there plugging in shots prefers talking up Mars. In an Oval Office meeting with Aldrin and Collins on the eve of the landing anniversary, Trump asked if it was possible to send astronauts to Mars without revisiting the moon. Collins replied yes. Who knows better than these people, right? They've been doing this stuff for a long time, the president said. He later instructed NASA Administrator Jim Bright and seemed to listen to the other side. If there's one thing NASA has learned in the half century since Armstrong and Aldrin, moonwalk, it's that all the flip flopping between the moon and Mars by presidential administrations has left astronauts no farther than the International Space Station since the fifth and final Apollo moon landing in 1972. Despite the lack of human presence on the moon, robotic spacecraft are exploring the gray, dusty world. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been circling the moon for the past 10 years. Earlier this year, China landed a craft on the far side of the moon. And on Monday, India plans to launch a mission to the moon's south pole. Tackling an engineering problem like getting astronauts to the moon, according to Bezos, requires consistency. It also requires government involvement, given the expense and scale of the project, he noted, as well as multiple companies, not just his own Blue Origin which is intent on, building lunar landers. What I really hope is that we stick with going back to the moon this time to stay, because that is actually the fastest way to get to Mars, Bezo said at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library Space Summit last month. It's the illusion that you can skip a step. Sitting steps slow you down. It's deductive, but wrong. Branson, whose company is working to take tourists on short flights to do, space, sees the moon as a more realistic destination for astronauts right now. Getting somebody onto Mars will be spectacular, almost as an awe inspiring thing as the moon landing, Branson said at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on Wednesday. But I think as far as putting time and energy and money into it, I think the moon. As the 50th anniversary party went down Apollo 11, S. Wondrous 8-day voyage ended with a Pacific splashdown on July 24, 1969 NASA keeps cranking up the lunar spotlight. Project Artemis, as it's called after the twin sister of Greek mythology's Apollo, aims for a landing on the moon's south pole. The key, said Bright and Steam, is sustainability. 
hundreds of millions of tons of ice lying the permanently shadowed craters at the bottom of the moon, a precious source of water for drinking, growing, food and making rocket fuel. We will spend weeks and months, not days and hours on the lunar surface, Vice President Mike Pence promised during Saturday's moon landing celebration with Aldrin F. Kennedy. This time we're going to the moon to stay and to explore and develop new technologies. Astronaut safety is paramount in getting to the moon. Bus speed and cost are close seconds. By moving up the target lunar landing, date from 2028 to 2024, NASA hopes to retire as much political risk as possible by getting out of the gate fast. The NASA chief estimates his agency will need billion to billion extra to achieve a 2024 moon landing. Flight possibly less if private companies invest their own money and I'm talking a lot of money. As for technical risk, NASA needs new lunar landers and staff on it, neither of which presently exist. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, Medrocket, meanwhile, has faced technical challenges and delays. If they do fly around the moon with an empty Orion capsule is now probably off until 2021. The first flight around the moon with the crew would follow in 2022 or 2023. In the meantime, a mini space station up the gateway whose need is questioned even by some within NASA would be built in lunar orbit. A pair of astronauts would descend from this orbiting gateway to the lunar surface, ideally by the end of 2024. The gateway eventually could serve as the departing point for Mars expeditions under the NASA plan. NASA currently has 38 astronauts, 12 of whom are women. The first woman on the moon as well as the next man on the moon will come from the tool of 38, according to Bride and Steam. Slash ATM, thank you for watching. Please subscribe.